are you doing Cabis? Are you doing RFT? Or are you doing VB? If you're a stakeholder of behavior analysis, you have to realize we have a lot of problems, but at the core, a good behavior analyst, a good program is going to be evaluating their data. They're going to be making adaptions off of that based on what is going on. And they will expand their skill set over time because what happens is if you are in one tribe, just in one area, you start to experience this sort of drift and it causes a lot of problems. And unsurprisingly, this has been a documented issue since the 80s. As humans, we are susceptible to all of the things that we know about in behavior analysis and the things we don't know about. We have tribalism in our own field. I have had these conversations where, are you doing CABIS? Are you doing RFT? Or are you doing VB? And whether those are real tribes or not, people identify with that. And if you come at them and be like, well, I'm doing RFT, they're like, oh, that stuff's weird. They don't even understand it, but it's not what they do. And as if we are true scientists, we should never be intimidated by things we don't know. We should be objective. We should look at the data. And then we're never really wrong because in science, information is always tentative and you're always looking for the next thing. And you have to be comfortable with not looking at the world as black and white, but in many shades of gray. And I, I, that's why I love science. And I love that part of our field. We are a science and if we can remember that, we're going to flourish, we're going to grow, and these issues that we're talking about right now won't be problems because we won't have these barriers that we're dealing with right now. You know, that that actually is a great springboard back to us talking about standardization. Um, the, one of the articles that we were looking to reference in this was this Hayes article, um, and you know, I had never thought about criticizing standardization in a scientific practice or even thinking that maybe it's not always optimal until I read that. And uh, the only thing that I can think of is that one, of, and, and this is just from my own experience now being back in graduate school over again at, at, at this level, is that uh, there it, it, the experimental or uh, explorational research is, a, is challenging when you start developing too stringent, too structured, too much structure, too much, too many rigid guidelines on how to go about certain things. What, what is your kind of thought on the idea of like, is there limitations to how you standardize things or is there kind of a middle ground there? Or, or what's your, when you hear that idea or that criticism, what, what's your kind of response to that? What do you think? I'd like to know exactly. I don't know the arguments that you're referencing. Hold on. I can jump in with those real quick, or at least a quick summary. So, so it was, uh, 1980. I've got it here. Journal of Applied Behavior Analysis called the Technical Drift of Applied Behavior Analysis. Um, Hayes, Rin, Rin Cover, and, uh, Solnik. And basically the idea was they looked at uh, I believe it was the first 10 volumes of Java to look at some different measures of how we were doing, um, kind of living to our core 1968 article, article by Bear Wolf and Risley. There was a clear drift in, uh, and what they mean by drift is there was a decrease in the number of publications that were coming out that were applied in nature. And what it was is we were starting to kind of form these standards and these things that we were interested in looking at. And I mean, we've seen this in other places, but I, I think what Dimitri's getting at there is like we start to create these standards to some extent, which can be extremely useful for us. But then um, we get these kind of cultural practices, right? We're kind of reinforced to, to engage in certain types of, um, in this case, publications. And it comes research study in some analog, uh, you know, controlled setting. But it was something that was socially significant to that person that we were looking at helping.